so let's continue from where we left uh, we are going to set the state of the address with the supplied values without any validations for now so I'm missing the code in this page so I'm just going to write the code so this will be entries is equal to an object with address inside an array and the values will be payload.data so I'm going to check the, if the data is already there so we'll assume that the data will contain uh, the name of the person to deposit and amount so in this case we don't need much validation other than we will need to check whether this particular address has already is already present or not that we'll do if the time allows so situate entries So that's it. The deposit part is over. Okay, so if it's withdraw. Context the catch date of address. This will be in promise. So we'll be getting the address and the values here. So and so this I'll check whether this particular address is clear. I'll get the particular address value clear state value so I'm checking whether the state value this state value will will be an array since we are like we are giving it as an array state value and state value dot length is greater than zero let the value to be state value of so we have to decode the value so before this we'll I'm going to use the SIBO method to encode the data inside. Mm -hmm. We are going to decode the values. And whether I'm going to check whether this value contains the ID or not. This ID is the ID which we are getting from payload. So since it's a throw, we need the ID to be present there. So I'm going to set the ID value withdraw and not going to do any validations value of ID minus payload data amount so fun so if you want the validation should be there so I'll check whether 
the value of id dot amount minus take data is greater than or equal to zero at least if it's there we'll just set the value else we'll throw an error saying insufficient funds complete the transaction so once things are done we'll we'll throw an error in this case then we'll do this agency method here as well so just we'll be setting the values in the same address with the updated data so we have updated the value already so I'm going to pass the value of an ID in this seaport code method. So this will update the state as well. So that's it guys. So this is this is how we'll write a transaction processor. On the next tutorial, if possible, I'll I'll try to do the do my own uh, transact uh, sort of the client. Else you can just use the same code which I shared in the previous tutorial. Uh, for as a client so we need to we need to modify the code a little bit and then make them make them look like a express JS application so I'm having a boilerplate code code as well if you want you can take this code uh, this is this is the same transaction processor and help the functions so you can use the same function if you want so this will register the code i'm going to do this as well now source wallet handler So this code you need to add in applications if you are doing some relevant process. This is man this kind of mandatory because we need to unregister our transaction processor before uh, re-registering re with the same name and same family version. So if you are not including this code, we will face some issues with uh, code deployment. Uh, if you are running the or if you are deploying outside Docker and services, so. You be, the, what this method will do is this will s s stop the family, family process and then it will unregister the transaction process from the validator so once we when we do the application process again this will mm, re-register without any problems so this transaction process underscore, underscore this is the internal method I'll update this boilerplate code with the sort of wallet handler if needed if you if you want to ask me in the comments so i'll do i'll include this link into the, the description So I'm just gonna tell what are the things which you need to be changed in order to change this code into my express application. We'll remove this augv package. 
we'll move this instance to functions so this transaction transactor instance will be created with our own version of uh, private keys so whichever user is signed in will get the private key from that particular user session and then we'll create the same clave client and the transactor transactor then this method will be called after that with a payload we are submitting from the uh, postman or the front end with this instance of whichever if we created using the new private key so if you want to have static private key for every transaction we just have to create a single instance when the application is starting we don't need to create a, every inch, a new instance whenever new request is coming in so it's up to you so that's it guys I'll include all the URLs in the description do like share and subscribe if you found this video to be useful this link to me thank you bye bye